Good day, good day everyone. And uh, once again, we are looking at question eight this time around uh, from the DBE 2021, uh, uh, you know, June paper. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, please just be part of the family. And of course, if you do need assistance, you are welcome to uh, email us at uh, info at mlungisengosi.co.za. Right, let's have a quick look at this question. Very interesting way of asking, uh, you know, uh, going through, you know, that um, galvanic cell, uh, you know, uh, redox reactions. So they say when a piece of metal uh, is used uh, to, uh, um, you know, uh, is added rather uh, to water in a test tube. They say hydrogen gas is released. Okay, so uh, keep in mind we've got sodium and we've got water uh, in this mix. So they say when phenolphthalein indicator is added to the test tube, the solution turns pink. So that suggests to you that uh, uh, the, there's a presence of a base there. Okay, or of hydroxide ions. All right, so uh, in this case, they say define the term reduction uh, in terms of electron transfer. Please remember that reduction is the gain of electrons, okay? Uh, that's what reduction is. All right, they say write down the reduction half reaction. Now, uh, let me just quickly take you through what's happening here. So what happens is that you're going to have two reactions um, somewhat taking place, and the first one, Okay, I'm going to show you these, uh, both of these reactions from the, uh, you know, standard reduction table. Now, remember, you've got sodium. It means that this reaction, this sodium metal must have actually undergone oxidation and became sodium plus, okay, by giving away an electron. So, it ionized and became sodium plus, right? But um, you also had, uh, okay, I'm going to show you just now. Uh, perhaps let me just do that before we uh, we go on ahead. Uh, so if you go to the, you know, to, uh, yeah, let me just show it quickly there. Okay, let's go to our standard reduction potentials table. Um, you can see there's the reaction for sodium. Okay, so that's uh, minus 2.71. Okay, so there it is uh, uh, over there. Sorry, I can see that I've actually hidden it. Um, uh, where is that sodium? Oh, yeah, right there at the top, minus 2.71. Okay, there it is there. Okay, and then we also have another reaction for H2O. Can you see that? So it undergoes reduction, H2O, and forms hydrogen, which is what they said in that reaction, isn't it? And uh, they said, okay, there it is, it forms hydrogen, but you also have hydroxide ions. This is what causes uh, phenolphthalein to turn pink. So I hope uh, uh, that kind of helps us uh, in understanding what's actually happening in that question. As I said, that's a very, very, you know, non, uh, it's, yeah, um, standard way of asking, you know, the, the galvanic cell. So in this case, uh, what do we have? So this would be the uh, oxidation reaction. This would be the reduction, uh, the reduction reaction. In this case, remember we had uh, H2O, okay, uh, plus two electrons. Uh, I don't remember if it was two H2O, uh, but we can verify and check again. Uh, there it is, two H2O plus uh, two electrons, okay. And what it gives us is, um, H2 uh, plus 2OH minus. Okay, right, so that's the oxidation reaction and that's the re uh, reduction of reaction. Of course, uh, we can get this in, in, you know, to write down the balanced uh, um, uh, reaction. In fact, might as well do that. Okay, so that means what I will do is that I'm going to have to multiply the top one by 2. Okay, so uh, so this becomes 2Na, okay, that will be 2Na, so that's 2Na plus and 2 electrons, and the reason for that, I want to make sure that my electrons are balanced, okay, so ultimately, um, of course, I can cancel the number of electrons there, uh, so I'll, I will have 2Na plus 2H2O, okay, and that will give us um, h 2 uh, but remember, we can actually add these two to form one thing there, which is uh, two times 
sodium hydroxide so this is a net cell reaction all right so they say write down the reduction half reaction remember reduction half reaction in this case uh, it's the gain of electrons so it's uh, it's this one uh, electrons are in the left hand side so to answer 8.1.2 um, that would be the reaction 2H2O plus two electrons okay and that gives us H2 and please note with one error okay plus 2H, uh, 2OH minus, okay? Remember, we got that from the standard potential table, uh, standard reduction potential table. Right, 8.1.3, they say write down the uh, balanced equation for the reaction that takes place. Well, guess what? We've already gotten that. There it is there. So uh, 2Na plus 2H2O uh, will give us hydrogen and it will give us 2 sodium hydroxide okay so there we have it there all right um, uh, 8.1.4 uh, they say give a reason why the solution turns pink okay uh, obviously we've got the presence of hydroxide ions or we can say because a base is formed okay because a base is formed okay or because of the formation of those hydroxide ions right and then they say when a piece of copper is added to water in a test tube no reaction is observed now uh, if you remember from that multiple choice uh, section that I, I, I actually did I actually showed you a you know just a way of uh, looking at this especially when you take this uh, 4b table right um, okay I'm, I'm just going to try and make sure that it's uh, a little bit clearer okay so if you look at uh, when we took uh, sodium and uh, you know that H2O reaction can you see that they are forming that C that we're talking about ne? okay this is oxidation so it comes all the way this side uh, and H2O reduction all the way that side so it forms that C but if you now take copper you now have H2O and copper is right there at the bottom okay there's copper there so now it would have to undergo you see so you can't go that way going up right um, but they did say we should use uh, you know uh, um, I think they said uh, re uh, reduction ability or in this case reduction agent okay so they said um, yeah reducing agents now what you simply do to answer that question okay let's go back to that you'll see that you've got two arrows there increasing reducing ability okay increasing oxidizing ability so we can look at this one because they talked about uh, um, you know reducing agent right so all we need to do is check okay so it seems that um, um, you know water in this case has a higher reducing ability than copper okay right so in that case remember because it is a stronger reducing agent uh, than copper right uh, in this case uh, it means that um, it will tend to want to undergo uh, oxidation okay so in that reaction uh, actually it would prefer to go the other way if it reacts with uh, with copper and so that's why uh, uh, so copper would have to be copper 2 plus all right to receive electrons but in this case we don't have copper 2 plus right so uh, just use that you, you can just explain again uh, and I did say that um, uh, water has is, is a stronger reducing uh, ability or is a stronger reducing agent than copper so in this case it would prefer to actually undergo oxidation in that rea in that uh, particular reaction okay right so i hope that is uh, clear all right let's go back to our question just to make sure that we finish up on what we were doing okay so uh, the last uh, few questions okay i'm not going to write all of that down uh, hopefully you were able to grasp that okay so the next one 8.2.1 they say consider the cell notation okay there we've got uh, 
plumbium. That's where the name comes from. Uh, that's where the name plumbing comes from. Um, so uh, yeah, it sort of reacts with uh, iron three plus in that case. So means that uh, plumbium is our oxidizing. It's it's our uh, anode. In this case, it undergoes oxidation, and of course, uh, iron three plus. Okay, uh, undergoes reduction and changes to iron two plus uh, ions. All right, uh, and notice because it doesn't go through a change in phase. In that case. You see that by a comma, uh, um, you know, instead of, um, you know, uh, that, you know, that that single line there. Okay, right. Now they say, what does the single line in the cell notation above represent? So this line here, obviously represents a change in phase. So keep in mind. Okay, and how do you know that it's a change in phase? It went from being a solid. To being an aqueous uh, uh, solution okay so in this case it represents a change in phase and that's why you don't see that line there because it doesn't go uh, undergo any change in phase it's from aqueous to aqueous right uh, and then they say state the change uh, the energy conversion rather that takes place in this cell okay remember for any galvanic cell uh, it converts electrical, uh, I'm sorry, uh, chemical energy. Okay, so that's chemical energy to electrical energy. Uh, pretty straightforward uh, with that one. Okay, and then um, uh, they say calculate the EMF of the cell under standard conditions. Okay, now please just keep in mind when you calculate, when you, uh, sorry, this was one 8.2.2. Uh, so when you calculate the uh, the EMF, okay, please just use the formulas that are, are given uh, right at the back. Okay, so there you have them there. Okay, so that's E cell. Okay, it's E cathode minus E anode. Uh, please don't abbreviate them. Uh, apparently examiners don't take too well on that one. So E cell is equals to E cathode minus E anode. So we're going to say E cell is equals to okay e cathode minus e anode okay remember it's standard e standard e standard there sorry right so which one is our cathode um, it's simple when they've given us a cell notation all we need to know is that uh, whatever it is that's on the right hand side that's our cathode so what I'm simply going to do in that case is just go back and check on our table. Um, so we've got uh, Fe and you need to be very, very careful. You see there's Fe3+, plus, but it becomes Fe0. Okay, so we're looking for the one that says Fe3+, plus. there it is there. Okay, I hope you can see it. Okay, so that's Fe3+, plus to Fe0. Okay, so there it is there. So it's 0 0.77. Okay, so that's our cathode. So that's 0 0.77 minus our anode. Uh, remember, our anode in this case is plumbium, which is lead, by the way. Okay, um, so there it is there, minus 0 0.13. Okay. So that's minus a negative 0 0.13, okay? And uh, that uh, should give us 0 0.9, okay? So that should give us 0 0.9 volts, okay? So we know that our EMF of the cell should actually be, so the E cell, E standard, in this case, should be 0 0.9 volts. All right, and I hope that is, um, yeah, and basically we are done with this question. All right, and I hope that it's really been helpful. Okay, uh, except that uh, for that unorthodox part, okay, but uh, nonetheless, I know that you would actually understand that quite well. All right, I'll see you guys again next time. Please don't forget to tell all your friends that you have a plug on physical science, and I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.